Let's pay homage to the lineage gurus. Homage to the Venerable Mangyal Ming. Homage to Master Sakya Zhengkong. Homage to His Holiness the 16th Kamapa. And homage to Master Dupton Dorji. Homage to the three jewels of the altar. Homage to the main deity of Homa today. Manohara Vasudara, the wealth attracting goddess. Sumo, Danzen Gatsu, Tutan City. All Dharma masters, Dharma educators, Dharma teachers, Dharma instructors, Dharma assistants, the directors of temples and chapters, and all disciples present here and over the internet. Good afternoon, everyone. How do you do? シャネ、シャネ、オラミコ、オラミコ、ケケロモチョ、ケケロモチョ、スコイン、スコイン、イジバ、イジバ、キムジ、キムジ、ジュミ、ジュミ、ヤビ、ヤビ、ブリブリン
Once you gain spiritual union with our Lokiteswara Bodhisattva, it's the same. It would be equivalent to spiritual union with all the infinite number of our Lokiteswara Bodhisattvas. So now I'd like to ask you, do you want to become primary supplicant or not? Today we perform Manohara Homa, fire offering ceremony. Manohara has led many people to hook money. And just now, I saw the Vajra hook of Manohara turning three times. And do you know what uh, she hook? Diamond, diamond. She hook on diamonds. That's amazing. The whole mountains and valleys are filled with diamonds. Just one carat diamond is already incredible. And this is filling the whole mountains and valleys. All diamonds. So someone will win the lottery again. We just said it last week, right? That the Malaysian disciple who just went home and won the first prize. And today I saw Manohara hook down diamonds that fill the whole mountains and valleys. This is a huge amount of riches. I hope that every spiritual cultivator is uh, endowed with riches so that we are not poor cultivators but we are wealthy cultivators. And Manohara does not only hook on wealth but she can hook anything. She can hook away our own uh, disasters and calamities. And you can hook all of our uh, good fortune and blessings. And she can hook someone that we love to come to us or to hook away our own uh, disasters. So the Vajra hook of Manohara has many benefits. And if you practicing Yidam, 
Dear Yoga, you can also hook your own Yidam to come to you and to gain spiritual union with them. So, Manuhara is like an agent. <laughs> So she's uh, an excellent agent, and she has tremendous power. She was uh, emanated from the heart of Amitabha Buddha, and her name is Haraya. Haraya. Since I saw diamonds of covering or filling the whole mountains and valleys, so those who registered for primary supplicants and merit holders have high hopes, have potentials. Let me share a few jokes. Xiao Ming was crying on the side of a classroom, and the teacher saw him and tried to comfort him. What's going on? Xiao Ming said, uh, on the street, I saw a beggar asking for money from me, and when I saw that, I felt really sad. And then the teacher said, you're a good boy, so uh, you have a kind heart, so don't be sad. And Xiao Ming replied, I saw the money in his bowl is much more than my pocket money. <laughs> so he felt sad because of that. Uh, there is a mother mouse strolling, uh, bringing a few of her little mice strolling on the grass, on the lawn. And all of a sudden there's a cat and all the, t the little mice disappeared and hid went into hiding, but the mother mouse stood still and was very brave. And the little mice were really scared. And the mother mouse barked, barked a few times. And the cat turned around and ran away. After the cat was far away, the little mouse, the little mice, one by one, uh, came out from their hidings until they all came out. Then the mother mouse said, Children, listen. How important the foreign language is. <laughs> <laughs> Second language is very important. Another People who drive Toyota are commoners. People who drive Audi are middle class, and people who drive uh, BMW 
and seven they are quite well to do those who wear uh, bands or drive bands uh, and then those who drive uh, golf stores are drivers <laughs> My master is a driver now. This is talking about and every day uh, my cash flow is in the trillion of dollars and I have countless real estate properties and I have brand names all over me, clothes and bags and wearing a, a limited edition of Patrick Philip. Do you know what I'm driving? This is a play of word of Chinese. What am I doing? Oh, I'm joking. <laughs> now we'll move on to the main topic question from Taiwan by Lian Hua Yiping. Grand Master, I have some questions. Please resolve. One, many Buddhas and Bodhisattvas have a wrathful form. How about Padma Kumara? And which one? Second, Master, in your book, number 77, the innate talisman on page 49, you wrote about the five elements, wood, fire, earth, metal, and water talisman to protect oneself. It mentioned that these five kinds of talisman should match the year. So which of the five elements is the year? Is it determined based on the heavenly stems, the earthly branches, or the five notes? For example, this year, the year 2022, is a yin year of the tiger. Rin belongs to water, yin belongs to the wood element, and it is metal according to the five lords. So which talisman should we wear? Or should we just ignore the year and wear them all, all five of them? Thank you for making the time. I wish Grandma's good health, safety. So, the five Buddhas are manifested as five Herugas and the eight great bodhisattvas manifested or emanated the eight Vidyarajas and he asked if Padma Kumara has a raffle form and if he does, which one? I do practice uh, the protector and my protectors are Yamandaka and Akalanata. Yamantaka and Akalanata, the protectors that I practice. And additionally, I also have Mahabala on me. Therefore, that day, 
that night on October, which date? I forgot the date. When the ghost came from the ghost witch, two of my protectors at that time was Akalanata and Mahabala appeared. Mahabala appeared from inside my body and came out from my mouth. And the sword of Akalanata came out and like a propeller and chop off the heads of all the ghosts. The invading ghosts. And they were in the battle for 20 minutes. I was lying on bed. And I was thinking, should I get up and help them? But it turned out Akalanata and Mahabala had been dealing with them, especially the sword of Akala was moving like propellers and revolving to chop off the heads of the ghosts and all of them were taken care of within 20 minutes. So does Padma Kumara have a rattle for Yes. Which one? This one. He's inside me. And originally he was the envoy of Siddhikarpa Bodhisattva with great power. Siddhikarpa Bodhisattva sent his envoy with great power to follow Grandmaster Lu. So he's uh, with me any time and any place, and he's protecting me. So this deity, Mahabala, is the emanation of Padma Kumara, the wrathful emanation of Padma Kumara. And he also embodied the love form of the Mother, Amitabha Buddha, Siddhikabha Bodhisattva, and Padma Kumara. All in him. <laughs> and this deity I was going to bring home to be enshrined in my living room. But we considered uh, our visitors would be scared to death when they walk into our front door. And it was uh, enshrined right next to the bathroom. And I said, I, I wanted to bring home. So back then, Master Lin Yin, when he heard that, <laughs> he moved it up here. <laughs> Right away, because he was uh, placing him next to the bathroom before. How could that be? So he moved it up here. This is a very formidable. This is uh, offered uh, by Master Changren and all the disciples in the 10 directional chapter in Hong Kong, the Dokjian Center in Hong Kong. And also the Sangarama and Skanda because uh, they made, uh, they sculpted them too big, so uh, their own chapter could not house them, so they sent them here. And also the Padma Kumara here, and all the deities right here, 
school, the mother and all the lineage gurus were all offered uh, by the Dokshin Chan Center and including the steps there. And all the deities at the Tribuda Seattle chapter before came from the Ten Directional Chapter or Dokshin Chapter in Hong Kong. And many of the Tributa School temples, uh, chapters, and centers also house many statues. So they are first and foremost in providing uh, statues to all of the Tributa School. Spiritual centers. You know, just imagine how much this one statue would cost to sculpt it. And the embellishments, the throne, and many of the stone statues were also offered by the Dokshin Center from Hong Kong. So the Buddha statues at the Limbo Temple were countless, almost all that we can see were offered by the Dokshin Center in Hong Kong. They did the best of all the centers chapters, and also the Lotus Light Charitable Society, charitable book, they also did really well. If you have a chance and visit their center, all the Buddhas and Bodhisattva statues there were extremely magnificent and bright and beautiful, just like in the heavens. And at home, we have two statues of Golden Mother that's similar to this one. And also, the main deity, Golden Mother, at the Taiwan Lezong Temple, in the form of a celestial maiden, was also offered by the Dokchen Center. So the merit that they created was incredible. So this Dokchen Center and the disciples there who had donated the money and time and skill if they are in their future incarnations, they all would have beautiful and magnificent looks. If you sculpt statues and give to people, so the statues would be your bodies in the future. You would have such great merit. And it would be easy for you to gain spiritual union and to be reborn in the pure land and have attainments through your spiritual cultivation. So Master Chang Lin and his uh, disciples there, he led his dis fellow disciples there really well. So on the second question by Lian Hua Yiping from Taiwan, so the wood, fire, earth, metal, and water elements. So every year, which one should we wear? I said, typically speaking, in the year of the wood, don't wear the talisman of the metal virtue god. And in the year of the fire, you don't want to wear the talisman of the earth god. So it has to match because the five elements either enhance each other or. Uh, 
uh, annihilate each other. So like this year, the five notes is metal. And the metal would uh, win over over the wood. And the metal would uh, give rise to water. So you should wear the talisman of the water, Virgica. So you should check the, the five notes. So if the five notes is metal, then you want to wear the talisman of the water god. And the metal wins over wood. So you don't want to wear the talisman of the wood the god. So you should uh, check the five notes. And it's okay if you just not worry about it, just wear all of them and some uh, would be enhancing and some would be decreasing. Metal gives rise to water, water gives rise to wood, wood gives rise to fire, fire gives rise to earth, and the earth gives rise to the metal. And uh, killing. <laughs> so, uh, the wood kills the metal, the metal kills the wood, and the wood kills the earth. The earth kills the fire. It's the counterclockwise. That's the concept. Mm, and a joke. Why is a woman called three eight? It's because three seven is a Chinese herb, and three nine is a drug. Is it a drug? It's a cold medicine. So three eight must be a delusionary drug. So when so man touch it, then you would become disillusioned. That's why the heroes cannot pass the temptation of beauties. Uh, at lunch, I was sitting together with many female colleagues, and they asked, so how do you feel having so many women around you? And, he, and I said, and he, I felt like an emperor. And then the female co worker said, Good, don't you feel that we are all so beautiful like the, the great lady of the Tang Dynasty? And then he looked around and said, Oh, one, two, three, four, five, they are really heavy. The young Guifei, which is the first lady of the Tang Dynasty. This is small, wise jokes. Dating, sometimes you love her, sometimes you want to kill her, but most of the time, you're on the way to buy the knife, and then you see food that she likes and buy the food and forget about the knife. 
So dating sometimes is filled with love, sometimes with hate. But spiritual cultivators should not be like that. In a human life, there are two moments that you cannot be calm. One is you win the first lottery, first prize in lottery, and second is when you see a flying cockroach. My friend always urged me to marry a wealthy man. When you travel, you want to spend money on food but not on shopping. Because you have to pay for overweight uh, luggage, but you don't have to pay if you gain weight yourself. So these are jokes with some nice cracks. The husband says, if someone wants to uh, grab you from my side, I would say, and the wife said, to let him better be dead than living? No, I would just let him, let him, period. Poor man, their name is very hurting. So now they are called economic suffering. So they are uh, customers with sensitive sensitivity to price. Those are the poor people. Every time my boss uh, reprimands me, I love to go to the zoo because only there I would feel like I'm a human being. When you're being reprimanded by your boss, you don't feel like you're a human being. Being single is a choice. But it's not my choice. My my th my only lacking is in my bank account. Don't say that I That the way to earn money is being written in the crime, which means you steal and draw. Okay, now let's get to the main topic. Vimalakirti Sutra. They could according, accordingly, they could turn the non-digressing wheel smoothly. And when you hear this verse, maybe you will say, what else to talk about? Just uh, follow, following the suit and turning the non-digressing wheel. The great bodhisattvas, they have known the ultimate truth of Buddha Dharma, so they are non-regressing. 
just like the Bodhisattvas on the immovable ground. They will not uh, go back. They will not digress. They, sometimes they have a uh, firm spiritual uh, commitment and sometimes they don't. That means you're still regressing. But not for the great Bodhisattvas. Why? Because the great Bodhisattvas already recognized the ultimate truth of Buddha Dharma. So uh, it doesn't matter whether they regress or not, they're still great Bodhisattvas. So there's no such thing as regressing. A true great Bodhisattva can speak on the ultimate truth for, to everybody. Like I did last night about unattainability, because it is unattainable, what is there to regress? The heart-mind is unmoved, you have reached the immovable ground. Now whether you regress or not, that's how it is, because everybody is, has nothing to gain, nothing to attain. Nobody can gain anything. And the water, the mind is completely serene. That's the immovable ground. And all the great bodhisattvas are that way. So, after telling you, speaking on it, everyone knows the ultimate truth. And that's turning the non regressing wheel. But the great bodhisattvas can go with the flow. And what is going with the flow? We often mention that in Buddha Dharma. Just uh, follow your affinity. And we often write calligraphy to encourage everyone. Just uh, follow your affinity. Uh, follow, go with the flow. Or just follow your destiny. Those are what the disciples need to do. So, what is going with the flow? Like for Grandmaster, in the past, my uncle. Now took me to the dance club and so I just go with the flow and spread Buddha Dharma at the dance club. So many drinking and dancing companion girls came for spiritual consultation. So I spoke Buddha Dharma to them. And I forgot to mention that there were also some dancing girls who finally became ordained and walked the spiritual cultivation path. There was a dance club in Taizong, um, and they had music. Life, it's not playing the music, but they have live music group. That's why I understand the dance rhythm. You know, I have said that before, if you dance blues, that's the rhythm for blues, for jive. That's for walls. And for Rumba. <laughs> That's for Rumba. That's Cha Cha. And tango. Pong, 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 da, pong, 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 da, pong, 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 da, pong. This is tango. 
That's tango. <laughs> so you can tell how much I have spent in dance class. So as soon as I hear the music, I would know what kind of dance it is. I know, but all the rhythms. Don't think that I was just dancing, but I was uh, delivering something being spy dancing. Like the last time, the feng shui of the desk of the boss of the white snow dance hall. I consulted, I brought the feng shui compass and consulted on the feng shui for him and also talked about Buddha Dharma. And then the music band who's playing the flute, oboe, Finally, he uh, came to do the school to become ordained, to become a monk called the Reverend Lin Yi in Taiwan Lizang Temple. So I uh, delivered him from the dance club. So, and he became a monk now. So he's in the music band, and there's the dance floor in front of him, and he saw Grandmaster Lu dancing with the dance girl and maintaining a certain distance. I'm definitely was not the kind who's, uh, who would be hugging and, and, and I also don't dance the blues, which is when they, they turn off all the lights and then like two lizards hugging each other. So all the lights were turned down, so I don't dance that. I just dance tango. So the, the member of the music band came to my house asking about Buddha Dharma and then after I became a monk, he also became a monk and he's called Reverend Lin Yi. So I delivered him from the dance class. So what is this? This is uh, going with the flow. So I can deliver sentient beings in any circumstances. The same with Vimalakirti. He could deliver sentient beings in any circumstances. As high as the nobility in the palaces and as low as the the prostitutes in the whorehouse or drinking homes. In the pubs, uh, a restaurant and bar, uh, also enshrined some gods and asked me to consecrate them. And I didn't recognize the deity with long nose, with big tummy, and carrying a, an axe. It turned out that they all worship the precept pig, so I did consecrate them. The mantra for consecration.
我念开光咒 ，opening the eyes, the ears, the nose, the heart, the mouth to deliver sentient beings. So I help them to consecrate the deity. That's the precept pick, and they wish by worshiping the precept pick, they wish that when man pass by. The, the, the gates or the front doors of the nightclubs, they would become like precipices, and then they would walk in. So I just go with the flow and consecrate them. <laughs> so almost all the precipices in the Taizong bars and restaurants were consecrated by me. So I still deliver them, right? So that's going with the flow. You know, in Tantrayana, there are many going with the flow, or following suits. Uh, Tantrayana is, but may not be other sex. If people love money, Tantrayana would teach you to practice the wealth deity yoga. You love wealth, right? So Tantrayana would teach you the wealth deity practices like Manohara today. And by practicing it, you have diamonds filling the whole mountains and valleys, and you have endless. You earn an endless amount of money, countless of them. And you practice Manohara, and you pray to her, and you would earn money. And the uh, money gods of the five directional, five direction would all come. The yellow jambala, red jambala, white jambala, green jambala, black jambala. And all the the head of the world deity, all of them would come, and even just Manohara is already incredible. But do they have world deity Dharma practices in Mahayana Buddhism? No, only in Tantric Buddhism. So Tantric Buddhism is most、uh, following. Going with the flow. So if you want money, you can practice、uh, wealth deity practices. And once you gain spiritual union, you can go deeper and further. So you the first your、uh, desire is satisfied first before you walk into the Dharma gates. So if you love money, then you have the wealth deity practices. If you love sex, then you're taught the construct practice. Let me tell you. I asked Vimala Kirti, "Do you practice the construct practice?" And Vimala Kirti said, "Yes, I do." He does. Why? Otherwise, what would the goddess who sprinkle flowers do? That's the wife. Because he was a lay Buddhist, of course he did practice the constant practice. He had the wife. Because Vimalakirti was a great lay Buddhist. And he had the wife, and his wife was the goddess who sprinkled flowers. He was, she was a goddess, a celestial maiden. So he practiced the constant practice with the pure mind, pure heart mind. If you have the pure heart mind to do the concert practice, then everything is pure. So Vimala Kirti said that, but only very few people that are qualified to do so. So if you greed, you are greedy for sex, then you do the concert practice. If you love fame. 
Then you practice a chusma. The great authoritative uh, Buddha. Then you would uh, gain great authority and power. If you want to become a president, then you can practice Uchusama. And the greatly authoritative Buddha, and many others too, not just Uchusama, like Mahabala, has great power, and then you can gain great authority. And in Tantayana, there's also Doji Shukdun. And most importantly, is to let people who practice Doji Shukdun to gain great authority, fame, and power status. That's Doji Shukdun. So there is a sect who uh, believe to practice it and the other sect that is against the practice. So in Tantayana, they go with the flow, but Mahabala which is Herukas with great authoritative power. Then you can also gain the same power. So you can gain fame and name, money and wealth, looks and sex. So first we entice them through their desire and fulfill it and then to guide them onto the Buddhist path. The most prominent three degrees are fame, wealth and looks or sex. And yet, in Tantrayana, we have Dharma practices to go with the flow. And how about for anger and aggression? If they, are, they often lose their temper, they should uh, practice the wrathful deity. Then that would match your temperament. Then first you subjugate yourself before you subjugate the other bad things. So that's the follow suit of the Tantrayana. Greed, anger, and delusion are the three poisons, and then you transform them to become five wisdoms. The five poisons can also become the five wisdoms, and that's going with the flow. So if someone is really foolish and silly and ignorant, then you ask them to practice the wisdom deity that can transform them to become wise and have wisdom. So this is called going with the flow. So there are methods to transform the greed, anger, and delusion to become good. So accordingly, or they could go with the flow to turn the non-regressing wheel smoothly. So by going with the flow, they can teach the wisdom or the knowledge of the Buddha Dharma to the disciples or sentient beings to deliver sentient beings. That's the meaning of this phrase accordingly or going with the flow. So this going with the flow it's not very easy to explain. There's actually a Sanskrit term for it, anulomiki or anuvardayante, or anuloma. So 
so that in any circumstances you can go with the flow and deliver something brings. That's what this term means. So turning the non-regressing wheel means that you teach the ultimate truth of the Bodhisattvas to everyone. So you can't turn the non-regressing Dharma wheel. That's the meaning of this phrase. Now, is it clear? I don't quite understand this joke. Once, once you cut your hair, if it fails, they always. They cannot admit that the problem is with the face, not the hair. A group of people. If a group of people is a. Uh, uh, celebrating New Year's Eve, that's a New Year celebration, but if you do it by yourself, that you're just staying the night. I mean, just staying awake. You love money, but you never have it. And human love, human life is like a heartbreak. You just live a few more days and you thought you have a good time. I don't quite understand it. When you cannot think through certain things, <laughs> Don't be anxious because after a while you don't even remember what it is anymore.